In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear eighth graders, that's the last time I can say that. So happy to have you here with your family to celebrate all of your accomplishments. We know it's been a difficult last few months, but the Lord is blessing us all the same through the midst of this challenge. So we are very, very pleased to be able to give thanks to God with you for all the ways that his blessings have filled your lives and to pray for this next stage of your journey. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that in the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Ahab sent to all the children of Israel and had the prophets assemble on Mount Carmel. Elijah appealed to all the people and said, how long will you straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. The people, however, did not answer him. So Elijah said to the people, I am the only surviving prophet of the Lord and there are 450 prophets of Baal. Give us two young bulls, let them choose one. Cut it into pieces and place it on wood, but start no fire. I shall prepare the other and place it on the wood, but start no fire. You shall call on your gods and I will call on the Lord. The God who answers with fire is God. And all the people answered, agreed. Elijah then said to the prophets of Baal, choose one young bull and prepare it first, for there are more of you. Call upon your gods, but start no fire. Taking the young bull that was turned over to them, they prepared it. They called on Baal from morning till noon, saying, answer us, Baal. But there was no sound and no one answering. And they hopped around the altar they had prepared. When it was noon, Elijah taunted them, call louder, for he is a god, and may be meditating, or may have retired, or may be on a journey. Perhaps he is asleep and must be wakened. They called louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as it was their custom, until blood gushed over them. Noon passed, and they remained in a prophetic state until the time for offering sacrifice. But there was not a sound. No one answered, and no one was listening. Then Elijah said to the people, come here to me. When the people had done so, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been destroyed. He took 12 stones for the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord had said, your name shall be Israel. He built an altar in honor of the Lord with stones and made a trench around the altar, large enough for two measures of grain. When he had arranged the wood, he cut up the young bull and laid it on the wood. 
Fill four jars with water, he said, and pour it over the burnt offering and over the wood. Do it again, he said. They did it again. Do it a third time, he said, and they did it a third time. The water flowed around the altar, and the trench was filled with water. At the time for offering sacrifice, the prophet Elijah came forward and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things by your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me that this people may know that you, Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to their senses. The Lord's fire came down and consumed the burnt offering, wood, stones, and dust, and it lapped up the water in the trench. Seeing this, all the people fell prostrate and said, The Lord is God, the Lord is God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, 
Whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teacher, teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear soon-to-be graduates, I know that Deacon Jim and Father Wellsbacher and Father Millis would all love to be here with me, and Deacon Nevin, to congratulate you. But what a strange journey we have been on. Elijah the prophet knew something about how strange life's journey could be. He found himself all alone. I guess we could call that socially distant. The last of the Lord's prophets. And the world around him seemed to have gone nuts. Everyone was following false gods. And Elijah was persecuted for remaining faithful to the Lord. But God had a special mission for Elijah. And that mission was for him to hold up to the world the truth. The Lord is God. And so he proposed to the people a choice. Make a choice. Who are you going to follow? God or all these false idols? And the people refused to choose. Let's be clear. You wonderful young people, who you become rests on the choices you make. And not choosing is also a choice. So what choices will you make as you go forward? Will you be a kind person? Will you be a patient person? Will you be a prayerful person? Will you be a studious person? The choices you make form your character. And the one thing that we can't give you is that choice. You must decide. Your parents are your first teachers. And boy, oh boy, have they had to earn that title these past three months. They can show you the choices that they have made but they can't make your choice for you. Mr. Grogan and the faculty, all of us here at Holy Family, we've tried to give you pieces of the puzzle. God will not always manifest himself with fire from heaven, but there are plenty of pieces of evidence to lead you to make a choice in faith, to be faithful to God, to become the person he created you to be. And that's what your education is about, giving you the pieces of information you need so that you can make a choice. The responsibility for that choice falls on your shoulders. And in fact, it's not just one choice. Just like your parents, on the day they got married, they made one big choice. But that one big choice is followed up by a hundred choices every day to be faithful to that one big choice. So it is for you. Choose to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus, and then you will have many choices every day 
to follow up on that big decision to be a disciple. What would a disciple do in this situation? How would a disciple confront that temptation? What would a disciple of Jesus do seeing others around in need or others around going the wrong direction and inviting you to do the same? The choices we make. We have given you the information, but God gives you the grace. For you see, how many times do we make choices and say, ah, I know I shouldn't have done that, but I did it. Our minds were showing us the path, but our heart tugged at us in a different direction. Therein lies the role of grace. God's grace that wants to enter your hearts. God's grace that wants to persuade you of the beauty of God's love for you. God's grace that wants to lead you to the blessings that no earthly path could ever give you. And that's why for all of the study that you have done here, we have had it accompanied with prayer. And you have to think about prayer not as simply spiritual homework. I did my math problems, I studied my Latin vocabulary, I took my history test, I said the rosary. No. No, prayer is entering more deeply into the relationship with our God. Prayer is not accomplishing a task. Prayer is coming close to God, making space in our lives and inviting the Lord into your heart. That's what prayer is. And grace is not a commodity, like our cars are running low on gas and so we go to the gas station and fill it up. Grace is friendship with God. It is the very life of God which is poured forth from heaven into your soul as a living temple. That's what grace is. And prayer is the means to welcome that presence of the God who loves you, that he might strengthen you to make the choices that your brains have the information to show you which way to go. My dear students, this is a lesson that doesn't end with eighth grade graduation, nor with high school graduation, nor with college graduation, not even with a doctorate, not even when you get to be an old fogey like me. This is a lesson that we continually have to learn how to become disciples. So we hope here that at Holy Family, we have given you some good momentum in the right direction, both with your intellectual formation and with the formation of your heart. I know what wonderful people you are, but I have yet to see what wonderful people you are to become. And that is where my great hope is. Seeing the potential that you have, I rejoice to see how you take advantage of the opportunities that lie ahead to become that wonderful light of Christ in the world around us. 
you should be very pleased with all of the accomplishments that you have made in these years up to this point. And now, trusting that God's love is with you every step of the way, we look forward to seeing what this next stage of your journey brings. Know of our love and our prayers every step of the way. Turning to our loving Father, let us place before him all of our needs. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Archbishop Hebda, for Bishop Cousins, and all the shepherds of the church, that they may always be attentive to the Holy Spirit in proclaiming the gospel of Christ to the world, let us pray to the Lord. For our graduating eighth graders, that the Lord might fill their minds and hearts with the power and love of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our families, that the Lord may assist us to continue to grow in love for one another as we grow in his love. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of the faculty and staff of Holy Family Academy, that the Lord might reward them for their labors and give them rest this summer. Let us pray to the Lord. For the addition that we are building to Holy Family Academy, that the Lord might keep safe all of the construction workers and bless it as a place of encounter with God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. For an end to the spread of the coronavirus, for healing for the sick, let us pray to the Lord for peace on our streets, an end to discrimination, and for healing for society's wounds. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those intentions we hold now in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord for our beloved dead, that they may rise with Christ in glory through the mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, we ask you to hear these, our prayers, and grant them if they be in accord with your holy will. We ask them as all things through Christ our Lord.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made here, and cleanse our hearts by the light of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore now and for ages unending with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, O Lord, and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of his dew, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear graduating eighth graders, you will tell your grandchildren about what a strange eighth grade graduation you had. Or maybe one of you uh, will be here as the pastor explaining it, or as the principal or a teacher in the school explaining what a bizarre year 2020 was. It's an important lesson for you to see that adults don't always get to do what we want to do either. Just to celebrate this Mass, I had 18 pages of regulations to follow, nine from the government and nine from the archdiocese. So it's a miracle, and we thank God for it, just to be able to have the opportunity to come and be here and pray together and to ask God's blessing upon you. So thank you for your patience and your understanding uh, for all of the, the ways that things had to unfold today, uh, not as any of us would have designed it. We especially want to greet all the grandparents and other relatives and friends who are participating by way of the live stream of this ceremony that couldn't be here in person. Uh, so we're, we're happy that they're able to, through the wonders of technology, be able to, to participate in that way. What happens next is, following the closing hymn, uh, we will have the announcement of graduates and the academic awards uh, and the, the speeches. And then when that's all done, then we will have Holy Communion. Uh, and so if you bear with us, it's kind of a three-part ceremony today and, and, it, uh, and we'll just we'll get through it as, as best we can. Uh, so know that even though I won't be able to, uh, to congratulate each one of you and give you a big hug, uh, know of my, my love and my prayers for all of you uh, and how very happy I am that you've been a great blessing to our school. And I look forward to seeing you next year in confirmation class. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Good evening. On behalf of the staff, the teachers, I welcome you all. Uh, we're going to name the graduates and uh, we'll have some musical accompaniment to that. And then we'll ask that as I do so that each graduate stands and then we'll hold our applause until all have been called and then give them one big applause. Melinda Arsenia Augustine. Mia Ariana Baltasar Rodriguez. 
Jacob, Anthony Brandel. Andrew, Joseph, Carlisle. Tierney, Helene, Eleanor, Dennison. Cecilia, Ann, Dick. Jacob, Thomas, Dylan. Anthony, Thomas, Fonlander. Anna, Eileen, Feltel. Vivian, Jean, Grogan. Cal, Joseph, Havlicek. Timothy, Edward, Herenic. Elizabeth, Ann, John. Monica Rose Larkin. Mary Josephine Lash. Abigail Jane Lux. Matthew James Miller. Owen Edward Pince. Gabriella Grace Rampitzrider. Cecilia Rose Spanton. And Ruth Marie Swenson. Now you all got away without standing the whole time, so now stand and we'll, apl we'll applaud you. Class History, presented by Jacob Dillon and Gabby Rampusrider. I was thrilled that upon entering eighth grade, we would make some great memories at the end of this year to last us maybe our whole life. However, it didn't roll that way. Instead, in the midst of our last quarter, we had to quarantine ourselves due to the pandemic. I've got to say we missed a lot, like the play, the track and field highlights of the eighth grade students versus teachers tug of war, which we obviously would have won, and the parents versus eighth grade students water fight, again, we would have dominated. And our eighth grade speeches, the traditional way we would have done them. But we also had memories from nine previous years worth cherishing. Let's start with some of the boys' favorite memories. Clearly, life's an adventure for us. In pre-K, we would dress up and play superheroes and start huge wrestling piles. In fifth grade, we started a beatboxing band called the Boop Bop Brothers. I remember when Mr. Zink put Mentos in a Coca-Cola to make a huge geyser that sprayed everywhere. We all thought that was so cool. How about tackle football on the field? That was indeed fun. We also played wall ball almost every recess of this first quarter. It was so exciting hearing someone shout, wall ball, and we'd have to sprint back and touch the wall. We were so excited to finally be able to alter serve, lector, canter, and be crossing guards in sixth grade. In sports, the boys and girls won a soccer division tournament in the SSYO. Some of us boys also played a memorable, memorable varsity basketball season coached by the famous Mr. Hartnett. I also remember entering the daunting middle school. What do we bring to class? Where do we go? Oh shoot, I'm late for class. Those were some of the expressions we had. Looking back, that was a long time ago. We've come so far. 
As far as the boys who joined and left over the years, almost all of us came from pre-K. Anthony, Owen, and Jacob B. were a few exceptions. We also had to say goodbye to a lot of boys throughout the years. However, I probably couldn't ask for a better friends right now. I'm glad that I still have great memories of our time together from the last nine years that I am blessed with. As Jacob, ha as Jacob has shared some amazing memories that he has had with the boys in our class, we girls have also had some unforgettable moments and memories. One of those memories was always wanting to be friends with new classmates. A new girl would come and shadow the class, and all of us girls would welcome her as a friend right away. I will also never forget those pre-K and kindergarten moments when we would dress up as princesses or play kitchen. We always found a way to have fun, whether it was creating fake pizza on the playground or creating crazy games at recess. As we grew out of those younger grades, we welcomed in new girls and sadly bid farewell to others. Each grade was a different experience. I remember in third grade when Mr. Zink had some of the girls try to fit under the stool, or when he had the class try on heavy chain mail that was a part of his costume from the play that year. Another fun memory was from fifth grade when Monica wrote a play about St. Kateri Tekakwitha and us girls practiced and performed it. Then we all moved forward together into middle school. I will never be able to forget our trips to Caribou or our all-girls sleepovers. Each year during middle school, we have grown closer to each other. I could not ask for a better group of friends. In the end, it may seem that the girls and boys have made separate memories, but actually most of the memories we made were boys and girls combined. Our class won the Christmas decorating contest two years in a row in sixth and seventh grade. Finally, together, we made it to eighth grade. We made some awesome memories during our first three quarters of eighth grade and all the years before. Nothing can replace the times when Mr. Hartnett would tease us or when Mr. T would tell us about how he raised his own pig. Not only that, but when Mrs. Pilon would joke with us, when Mrs. Bryden would teach us the weirdest and coolest facts, or when Mrs. Cruz would play music and dance to it for us. I am forever grateful to these teachers and to all the teachers I've had during my 10 years at Holy Family Academy. I especially want to thank Mr. Grogan for all he has done in leading our school. I know my classmates share the same gratitude. Now that the school year has come to an end, we are going to miss everyone a lot, but we will always remain friends. Thank you, Holy Family, for making us who we are as students, and to my classmates and friends who have made this an amazing class. I also want to thank Father Joseph, who has been a big part in all of our lives, for everything he has done for our class and our school. Finally, as we all head our separate ways and bid our farewells, I wish my classmates the best in high school, and God bless. Just a few words about this class before we progress into the awards ceremony. Um, as you can see, our school is a lot more than just academics. We have so many, it's life basically. We have these uh, children um, being together and learning how to live together and having fun together. And as they're doing academics, having fun with it and with their teachers. And most importantly, um, growing spiritually. So one of the privileges of being in such a small school like this is that we really get to see the individual challenges that each child faces. And much like you as parents, you know, to, I got here in fourth grade, but to watch what they grow into over the years is amazing. And um, I'm gonna announce some awards, and they're well earned, and they're, they're some, some are based on numbers, some are based on who had the best virtue. But I wanna echo what Father said that, you know, all of these students, we're so proud of them. And when they move on to high school, if they keep up the level of spiritual uh, dedication and work ethic and just spirit in general to have fun and, and do the right thing, it's going to be amazing to see what we're going to be saying about them four years from now or eight years from now or 30 years from now. So 
That being said, I am going to announce a, uh, some of the uh, traditional awards that we, we always announce. So the B plus honor roll, um, which is the eighth grade year, entire year, uh, greater than a 3.3 uh, GPA, the following students, and you may stand when I call your name. And we'll reserve our uh, applause for each group um, and do them all after, after one group is finished. So eighth grade GPA greater than 3.33, Anthony Fonlander, Anna Feltel, Vivian Grogan, Matthew Miller, Owen Pince, and Cece Spanton. The high honor roll for the year, which is uh, greater than a 3.67 GPA, we have Jacob Dillon, Cal Havlicek, Tim Herenik, Monica Larkin, and Gabby Rampensrider. tell you the teachers make them earn those grades. There's no inflation here at, at Holy Family Academy. Our next set of awards are for the, each quarter we give a, what we call the Crusader Award, and that is for the student who is showing the most spirit, virtue, improvement, um, just being what, what we consider a Crusader, a Holy Family Crusader, to be the best. So our four awardees for Crusaders Awards for this year for first quarter, and please stand, Andrew Carlisle. Second quarter, second quarter, Gabby Rampensrider. Third quarter, Monica Larkin. And fourth quarter, Abby Lux. Our next award is what we're going to call the Principal's Award for Effort, Virtue, and Class Spirit. It's the second time we're giving this award, and um, we want to recognize Owen Pince for that. <laughs> Our two traditional final awards are the JP2 Award and the St. Gianna Mola Award. Um, these are for students who exhibited the overall the best achievement, virtue, um, dedication, spirituality. And this year, uh, the St. John Paul the Great Second Award goes to Jacob Dillon. The St. Gianna Molo Award goes to Gabby Rampensrider. So I guess it's fitting that we get to have communion pretty soon. What a nice finish. Um, thank you, everyone, for especially parents who are, this may be your last year at Holy Family. We know you're. You're not going to get away that easily. We'll still see you. Um, we know that uh, we'll take a picture in the front lawn over there. Um, and um, maybe they'll have some fun tomorrow. I maybe. I'm thinking so. <laughs> God bless. I just want to echo my thanks to Mr. Grogan and the faculty and staff for their heroic labors uh, to change a school where we've always said to be very restrained with screen time. We want you in real relationships and, and not just uh, in front of a, of a screen all the time uh, to a distance learning program uh, overnight. 
and it took a lot of effort and your, your teachers made a lot of sacrifices to give you still a great education uh, in these last couple of months. So uh, I know that you join me in your gratitude for them. And I know they are very pleased. they're very pleased to be here with you uh, today and to celebrate as well. The greatest blessing, of course, that we ever could hope for is the presence of our Lord Jesus himself, uh, which we believe uh, is here in the Holy Eucharist. So uh, at this time, uh, I'd ask you to just prayerfully reflect now on the beauty of this gift of Jesus' body and blood to us. Uh, which assures us of his love for us, his unending love for us to get us through every challenge in life and also gives us the strength to go forward uh, to face those challenges and to bring his light uh, to our world. So our procedure for Holy Communion uh, will be as follows. We'll bring you up one household at a time. I will uh, go between each side of the communion rail. If you line up standing in front of your side of the communion rail, we'll receive communion uh, flat on your hands, uh, and then you'll consume the host and then uh, exit by the side door. While I'm giving communion on one side, uh, the next household will be getting ready on the other side, and that way we'll go through and it won't take uh, too terribly long. And then uh, just make your act of thanksgiving uh, on, your, on your way home, uh, and know the beauty of God's presence is always with you. So happy that we could have this ceremony, even with its restrictions, uh, to be together and to congratulate all of you on your hard work and accomplishments. <laughs> 